Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make custom log catches. But I'm also going to show you how they work and what can go wrong with them, including Zebulon's one, the one using the gazebo. So after many years of not understanding how they work, I finally figured it out. And yes, they are a pain. I'll put timestamps in the video so you know what sections are what, such as how to build them, etc. And also there'll be a link in the description for the Zebulon's one, because it's still relevant. But this gives you a bit more freedom to design your own, and you can make it look pretty much how you want, within reason, but you'll see. Now, originally this video I had recorded, edited, and completed. And then I found out oh, a few things that made me have to go through and re-edit the video. So it might be a little bit messy, but I'll try and keep it as consistent as possible. I've had to re-edit about half the video, which is annoying, I will say. Yep. Now this is another supplementary voice add-on to say that I redid the entire video. And I thought, oh, I made the other video completely. I'm going to upload it and have it unlisted. It will be in the description of this video. Now one of the first things I'm going to answer is, do you need a log catcher? And the answer is probably going to be yes. I did a test on how far away logs can go before the game makes them explode. I first tested it out where they went out of render. I thought they were going to explode. So I jumped on the zip line and went and they didn't explode. They just fell on the ground. But it wasn't far at all. This zip line was about four ropes long. I decided to go with one that's five ropes long. I think it was probably only about, I don't know, eight meters longer than the other one. I don't know how many feet that is. And they just violently exploded. So you really cannot go far without making a log catcher of some kind. They all spawn inside each other and sit there. And as soon as the player comes along, they all reappear. And because they're inside each other, they explode, which is not fun. What makes it worse is if they land on water, because getting them off water is an absolute nightmare. Now, the main reason I have to go through and re-edit it was I was testing out the crane because originally that was the best one I could find for the log catcher. However, I found out that the crane platform itself, logs on the zip line don't collide with it for some reason. Though if you put something on top of the platform, you discover that they can be collided with. I haven't explored this massive amount, but it's very useful information to know because they go through the platform, but once they spawn in, they'll collide with it. So if you send 50 logs down, they'll go through it. Once you go near it and they reappear, they will explode still. So if you've got the platform too low, they'll explode. Now there's a few designs I've come up with. Originally, I thought the crane was the best one, but the issue is placement. If you build the zip line, then place the crane, there is a chance it can clear it. I have not been able to figure out why this is. It appears to be random. It seems to be like an event in the game that gets triggered that it will either clear it or it won't. So if it starts clearing it, it's gonna keep clearing it. Once it stops clearing it, it won't continue to clear it again until you save an exit. And because of that painful process, I'm kind of not so keen about the crane anymore. The greater the angle of the zip line, the more complicated I think the structure is gonna be. Like there's one that I made that was one level and worked really well because the angle of the zip line was quite straight. So I made it easy to get into. The best one I found, however, involved making it basically two stories high, and it's still relatively cheap to do. You can make them smaller, you, though you run the risk of more logs falling out, but not many. And I did do another design, which was basically using rock walls to see if I could save on logs, and it can be done. I tried with pillars, which was one of the most boring and tedious things to ever do, and it didn't even work that well. Logs were falling out. I did completely seal it up with rock walls, and it did work a lot better. It's still not very fun to do, and it's not made out of log holders, so you have to store the logs somehow. Though I did end up turning it into a little bit of a castle tower. I thought I'd spice it up a little bit, but it still didn't look very good though. Now, the old way of catching logs doesn't work. That was making a floating zip line and having them fall down. They released a patch not long after the zip line came out that made the logs collide with each other. Before they would just all fall down, but now they explode. So this old design doesn't work. They won't fall down, they'll just explode midair. Now this was one of the smallest log catches I was able to make. I don't really recommend it. It ends up costing a lot anyway, and it was a real pain to make, because if I went in there, I got stuck. I used the chandelier to keep the logs in there. But as you can see from testing it, it does work, but because it's relying on pressure to keep them all in there, they start shooting out the front and they rotate around in circles, which I don't think would be very good for performance at all. But that's just to show you how small they can go. Now, one of the ones I tested just before recording this was using a roof because I thought a roof would be quite cheap if it's got no wall around it. Though I did add a rock wall. I don't really count rocks as being expensive because they're pretty easy to get. It's more tedious than anything. I didn't make it look very clean, but it managed to keep all the logs in there except one shot out the front, but it didn't shoot too far. So you can make like a little house out of this one. But I'm going to show you how to do the main one. Now first, place the zip line that you want to place. Then what you do, you get the custom foundation out and you go along the side about the width of the zip line. So if there was another zip line right next to it, just go to that distance. You can actually make them a lot smaller, but I think this is a good size. It prevented a lot more explosions. 
and you try to aim for that middle pillar, there should be three pillars on the foundation itself. Try and get that right in the middle. It will end up a bit cleaner and easier to build with and make a square roughly the same size. The good thing about this, you don't really have to be exact. It just seems to be quite easy to do. But that initial platform was 15 logs and that was on a hill. If it's not on a hill, it should be only about 11. Next is a tricky part, but you gotta do it right. Try and line up a space for the logs to get in and it's gotta be tight. And you gotta build a rock wall around it. And you gotta do this weird shape and I don't know what this kind of shape is, but you're basically making it like four rocks wide all the way around. And the reason for this is you're gonna put a custom floor on it. Now you only build one section and you check if it's right in the middle. See how I was checking there? That's what you wanna do. You build one section, clear the rest. Build another, clear the rest. Next, you get the wooden floor out and you test if it's the right shape. There's a little bit of off cuts in that because it wasn't exactly straight, but I didn't really care. But you don't have to. Now that's six logs. So, so far it's 21 logs, not including the zip line. Next, you start placing the log holders around. You can leave gaps so you can get in and out. Logs usually won't fall out of those gaps as long as they're not too wide. And make sure you block off the end because when the logs come in, you want them to stop. If they go straight through, then it's, it's not a very good log catcher, is it? You want to place one log pillar right in front. You really need that to stop the logs flying out. And then you place the log holders around the top. And a good thing is about doing it too high with the rock walls, you can see the other log holders poking through and it can be good for aligning. Now, I can't stress this enough, but the entry point really does need to be tight, but not too tight that it blocks the logs coming through. If you're unsure, you can build rock walls and pillars later on to tighten it up. It's cheaper to clear rock walls than it is to clear a large log holder. Now, basically how it works, you need the zip line, then you build walls around it. Best way is with log holders because then you can store the logs afterwards. You have a very tight, narrow gap where the logs go through. You block off the bottom so they don't pop out the front because that's where they're most likely to shoot out. And you've got to make sure you've got enough clearance above, which is barely any, but below it, you've got to have a bit of clearance. And the other thing is you've got to have a roof. There we go, that's pretty much it. But you want to add the roof as well. So the way I do this is I go around the inside and this is really easy to do. You don't need to go around the outside. It will probably be actually more difficult. But one thing I'm doing here is I'm only making one pillar. So I'm like a single rock wall there. And the reason for doing that is I only have to build that one pillar there. And it's a lot cheaper than building all the rock walls. So that's eight rocks gone up. I'm not going to mention the stick cost for this because it's outrageous. <laughs> it's really expensive. So custom ones do cost a lot of sticks, but it's designed to store the logs as well. Now this design isn't exactly cheap, but it's very practical. It costs less logs than the gazebo, but it costs a lot more sticks. And on the side there, I just put some lights there just so I can know that's the place I can get in and out of. But once it's all done or you think it's done, you just chuck a couple of logs down and see if they go in. And then once it's passed through, I did a proper test and all the logs managed to stay in there bar one, I think. I did another test just to make sure it was working sufficiently and only one fell out again and they didn't shoot out, which is good. I did the same design again just to make sure it all worked correctly. But yeah, it worked. Not as good as the next one because the gap was much looser. So here I show you how to uh, tighten that up. So you place rock walls and single pillars and the tighter you can get it without it colliding, the better it's going to be. And the beauty of it is that if you placed your log holders far enough apart, all it's going to cost you is rocks. Now, one thing that was good about, now one thing I learned with this design is that you can do this with your normal house. The only thing is that you'll need is a very tight gap for it to get in. If you've already got your house, you're not going to have an issue with the roof and the walls. The only issue you're going to have is fitting that zip line through and making that gap nice and tight. Yes, logs will explode inside your house, but it's where you want them, isn't it? Here's something that you got to keep in mind as well. Do not use a hole cutter near the zip line because even if it's not showing as it's going to be cleared, it will still probably be cleared. They're very sensitive to the hole cutter. I don't know if they... So stick with the upgraded spear for clearing things like the rocks and that sort of stuff. Don't take the hole cutter near the zip line. So I just don't like it. What complicates the process is the height of the zip line, the way it's coming in. If it's really high, it doesn't leave you a lot of room to work with. The good thing about going with a custom one over Zebulon's gazebo one is that it gives you a lot more breathing room. So if you mess up custom one, it's going to be very easy to fix. If you mess up with a gazebo, you're most likely going to have to clear it. Considering they're worth like 60 logs and 46, it's not fun. Think about the design I recommend. I didn't even think of this, but you can put log holders on the roof as well. There's no reason why you can't. The walls should make up sufficient amount of log holding ability. Now, while I talk about some stuff that I think is important, I'm going to just show you footage of some of the log catches I've made and how they go in action. Now, keep in mind if you're doing this or testing it that you can only have 50 logs on the ground at a time, any more and they'll despawn. 
important. A good reference to use is using four log carts filled with logs. So that's 48 logs. And I only do four log carts at a time. Send them down, pick them up, put them away, and then you can come back. Something I've tested is that custom foundations don't work. If you build a foundation around a zip line, it sounds like a good idea, but the logs will just go straight through the pillars of the foundation. So it will act like a roof, but not a wall. Now, if you're looking to do some testing with this using console commands, etc., you can just type in developer mode on in the main menu. And then after that, if you press F1, you should see a little message up the top left. This only works on PC. And here's a list of all the commands that I used. I thought you might find this helpful if you're gonna be doing this type of stuff. Also, I used a key binding to drop the logs onto the zip line. That way it was automated. I left about a 600 millisecond gap between putting the logs on. If you put them on too fast, they collide and fall off. That way, when I'm testing the log catcher, I can turn log hack on, push the button, walk away, go do some crap around the house and let it do its thing. It's gonna max out at 50 logs, so it doesn't matter if you go over. One of the things that slowed down the progress of this video is that there's so many designs you can do. I can't test every single one of them. So you might be able to come up with a much better idea than me, but the premise remains the same. I have a very tight gap for the logs to get in so they can't get out without any leaks, of course, all around it. Now, another idea I had just before I started recording this third voiceover is something you could do is if you end up making a tall one that's two stories, you might be able to make it tall enough to make a zip line on top going back the other way. So it will make it easier to go backwards and forwards. If it's not quite tall enough, you could always add something cheap on the top that will give you the right elevation to go back. Now, the crane one's still one of my favorites because of how cheap it is. I think there's a good chance it's even cheaper than the gazebo one, and it's less likely to stuff up unless you clear the zip line with the crane. The thing is, though, I'd recommend building a foundation underneath. If you're going to build a foundation underneath the crane, make sure it's quite high, and that way you can seal that gap between the top of the log holder and the crane platform. It will definitely make it easier to contain the logs. And also, if you don't want the logs to collide with the crane platform and you still want to build log holders on top, just don't build log holders over the pathway of the zip line itself. So where the rope goes, don't build a log holder over it. Now, if none of this interests you and you don't want to be bothered with this mechanic of the game, there is a mod you can find on Mod API that allows the log holders to catch the logs at the other end. It's got a description on how it works, etc. It works very well. It is only available to PC players. The reason I don't use it is I don't like to play with mods. I've liked to make my videos in a way that that allows most people to be able to use the ideas I'm presenting. Some are just exclusive for console commands and mods. There's nothing I can do about it. But the ones that I can get around, that's what I do. You still got to think of the console players. Anyway, that's it. That's all I can cover on this. As mentioned, the other video will be in the description. It will be unlisted. I think there may have been things in that that I didn't cover here. The unlisted one is probably a little bit more laid back. I'm not sure. I've been working on this video so much that I just don't remember things anymore. Everything's a blur. You see? Anyway, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.